we go hit the record button been up since four in the morning all right and here we are guys welcome to a brand new edition of the bid nerds my name is john polnick your host along with my partner michael yep. deeb right there this is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer and sometimes p car market and other places um we just kind of nerd out about the cool cars on the auction sites man that's oh, what we man. do we make predictions on what we think they'll sell for. We tell you about the cars, how, why yeah. you should or shouldn't want one of these. Um, so, boy, you know, we talked about uh, some cars yesterday. Uh, that didn't go so well for me. Usually, I'm much better at it than Michael, but um, uh-huh. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Something's in the water. Maybe I'm losing my touch. Michael, what happened Ooh. yesterday, my man? I, I Honestly, I can't explain it because our bids were actually all pretty close together, mm. but... You know, here's the thing, JP. Sometimes I wonder, most of our audience, if mm. you are actually bidding on the car or just bidding on my prediction and bang over and under. And mm. yesterday you mm. just caught you got caught on the wrong side of the bid all day until the yep. very end. The very end. And even on the very end, that car landed between our two bids. It just landed closer to yours, which was uh which was a good good call on the yeah. Toyota. Well, uh, let's talk about those cars that we talked about yesterday, and then uh, we're going to get to the uh, top most interesting cars on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer. What is our uh, supercar today? I should know. We have a star car. We have one that we're excited to talk about first when we get to it, but you can see all the cars that we'll talk about on the links below in the uh, section down there. We'll add all the links so you guys can follow along. Um, Yesterday's cars, what did we do? How'd that go? Uh, so it's pretty cool. We started on cars and bids with a Japanese import. This is a 1993 Mercedes-Benz 400E AMG Stage 3 car, Stage 2 car. Um, in 93, Mercedes-Benz uh, did not own AMG. AMG was an aftermarket tuner. And so this car was purchased by a Japanese owner and set the car to AMG to get all this work done, uh, which made it a very unique car. Uh Doug DeMiro was speculating that our AMG 400E might have been one of 20 cars ever produced uh, on on that platform. Anyway, uh, the car was imported. It had just 47,000 miles, but it didn't make a lot of horsepower despite the tuning. I said 33,000. You said 29,000. That car did, in fact, sell for $36,750 for my first victory of the day. Look at those. That was the wheels. that was the Mercedes. Yeah, sorry. I had yeah, uh, everyone. Yeah, I had I, the pictures of the our star car yesterday I, was an Audi RS2, but we started with the yeah. B, the Mercedes for some reason here. Okay, we're off to a rocket yeah, start. That's good. <laughs> um, all right. Part, so sorry, JP. I know you've been up since in the morning, but your partner exhausted too. I, I have no excuse. I apologize. <laughs> uh, the star car, the 1994 RS2. Uh, is an Audi Porsche collaboration. One of my favorite cars. They say don't drive your heroes, but by all accounts, these cars drive great. I can't wait till I either own one or at least get behind the wheel. Um, despite having 160,000 miles, this car was on a U.S. title, so I thought it should be 47,000. You took the under at 45, and this car, in fact, sold for 50,000. I'd say both of our guests were in the correct neighborhood. Uh, but that was my second victory of the day. Uh, the next car was by far the most obscure. This was 1977 Maserati Kayalami uh, 4.2. Um, later, Kayalamis did, were offered with a 4.9, but this is sort of the broke bitch version. This was also on Bring a Trailer. If I remember, JP was this car out of like New York or something weird. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really hard to figure uh, a plan for this one. So I, I said 41000 um, you kind of looked at it and just, I, I can tell the way you're talking to it, you were looking at it, just thinking of the repair bills and the unreliability. So you bet under again, and this car did bring what the lower end of the market for these cars is worth, and that was $49,000. All the money still wouldn't be a hundred grand, but 49 is on the lower side. So I'd say it was well bought. Well, uh, hold on a second. That car, hold on. The, the, the yeah. Maserati, it wasn't yeah. bought, right? Didn't it, uh, didn't it just oh, get bid to that? Thank you, JP. Yeah, uh, there you go. It was bid to forty nine thousand, so the reserve was set higher. I I have my notes, but like I said, I'm 
I don't think I slept last night. Uh, there you go. So yeah, um, so that the, so the bid goes on. I wonder where that car will pop up, JP. I wonder who will be offering it. We'll see it. I mean, it was just such a some, just an uninteresting car, and you know, I I admitted that I didn't know anything about it really, uh, and I don't want to now that I know more about it. I'm like I, I don't care. Um, so my bid, yes, was absolutely kind of off of you thinking maybe you have some clue what the heck the thing was, but I just don't see any yeah. future for that car, even though technically there's some value to them. I mean, the fact that somebody bid 49,000 for it is shocking to me. And I would think that whoever owns that thing should have like jumped at the opportunity to get rid of that car. Um, but yeah, yeah whatever. It, it's interesting because, you know, cars from the late sixties and the early seventies for Maserati, you think of mm-hmm. the Indy, the Bora the, and the, um, uh, the Mistral, and uh, of course the Ghibli. These were beautiful cars. I mean, like really sexy supercars. And then, and then they made this thing, and it's just it's super Bertone looking. It's all boxy, and it just looked like, you know, a, a, a business car. Like you know, it's like a business suit as opposed to wearing something I don't know more fashionable. Uh, it, it, and again, weight I I think holds this car back. It's never going to be an exciting driver. It's just going to be a very luxurious tour -er. Mm -hmm. so anyways there you go bid goes on um jumping over to cars and bids real quick uh we selected the 2017 ford focus rs this car had some miles on it it did have fifty thousand miles on it and uh uh, but still we we thought the car was going a little more i said 29 you bet the over on this car again on the wrong side of me Mm -hmm. at uh, thirty thousand. and uh we this is probably the car we got we were the most off of because that car uh sold at twenty three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars i am fairly certain these cars were damn near 50 grand when they were brand new so here's a three-year-old version with fifty thousand miles and out of warranty and it didn't even bring 50 cents on the dollar um and you're talking 350 horsepower and 3400 pounds chassis that's got to be can you think of a better car for that money for 20 what was it 20 what yeah how much did it go for 20 23,750 bucks. And it sold at that price, right? It wasn't just bid to, that was the sell. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, what other car could you just roll up to autocross and and win? I mean, you know, a capable enough car to be able to be, you know, as competitive as can be. Um, I I can think of no other car for for that money. So somebody got a great deal. I don't know if that's what they go for. I thought they were worth more. Um, not yeah. a car I would Maybe ever the- buy, even though it's so good. It's just no. you know, the boy racer thing really turns me off on that thing. Yeah, it's a weird, a weird one. Um, yeah. So there, there you go. And then uh, the last car of the day turns to be really weird. JP, you might have mm-hmm. a few comments about this because you were reading the comments after we got off the show. Uh, anyway, we're looking at like a 60,000 original mile Toyota MR2. JP pointed out that this was a very low spec car. No fancy roof, no fancy wing. Um, but still, it was a stick. And you rarely see them in what appears to be excellent original condition. As such, I said 7,500. JP successfully bet the over at 8,000. But you also read the comments and followed this auction as it was winding down. And you asked the sellers some questions. And JP, what did what was your take on this car? Well, you know, I mean, that's where these, th- you know, we sometimes kind of come, we come in kind of loose on these. We, we, uh, we look at the ads. You do a lot more research on the cars than I do. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of things are revealed in the comments. But you yep. kind of have to put your investigator cap on right like one thing that it mentions in the ad that there was body work and you know there was uh you know new paint and stuff like that and the owner had spent a whole bunch of money on making this car look good and it certainly did the pictures may you know show that hey this car looks fantastic and i was genuinely interested in the car uh given how low the the price was but both of us were like why is this sitting so low this should be more um Mm -hmm. and i Uh, so I may be responsible for killing this poor kid's ad uh, because (laughs) reading in the actual ad, I didn't notice it until reading it the second time after the show, it said the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge do not appear to be accurate. Now, fuel gauge, yeah. you can that's easy to have that situ- scenario. Uh, there's yeah. still fuel in it, and it says there isn't. Or it says there's fuel, and there's not. Okay, uh, so it's that's very common. But to have a temperature gauge not be accurate, well, how would you know one way or the other without having something fairly bad happen. Um, and so I <laughs> asked the question, I'm like, Hey, uh, how do you actually know the temperature gauge 
isn't accurate. And uh, he, the owner, you know, responded fairly quickly and said, well, uh, we're having temperature spikes. Um, and it's like, oh, well, wait a second. Then yeah. it still begs to, you know, begs the question, how do you know it's not accurate? Uh, but he said, you know, he's gone through the process of trying to figure that, figure out why the temperature is spiking. And they're like replacing thermostats and other stuff. So it appears that the car is overheating and overheating badly. And that is the Achilles heel on this car. The Toyota engines are mostly bulletproof but if they overheat you're gonna blow a head gasket and you're gonna warp the head and uh engines toast that's the one thing that will kill these um and you know the last thing you want to do is drive up to you know somewhere like walla walla washington where the car is buy it and you've got to drive a thousand miles home with temperature yeah. spikes uh that's not a good recipe and a hitchhiker in the passenger seat right yeah right you know no you know. Anyways, Woo. this car made it. This car was bid up to seventy nine hundred dollars. Um, did not sell at that price. So this, yeah, guy, which is uh, another like what? Protecting his investment with a reserve that was set realistically by bring a trailer. Uh, yeah, guy, you guys both deserve each other. Yeah. <laughs> bring a yeah. trailer and the owner of this Toyota. Uh, silly. That was all money, especially for a car. Uh, sorry, the problems that JP flushed out by reading the comment. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Four wins for the day. One uh, for JP, four for me. Um, it was uh, not a good day for Team Polnick. There you go. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so what's our... Uh, what is our hero shot? Of well, it's that there? wagon, man. It's a wagon day. We love our wagons I on Bit Nerds. I knew it. I knew it. That's awesome. Okay, so let's start off then. Uh, JP, let's jump right Ooh, in. On, look at that. On, on Bring a Trailer, this is a Jason Camisa special. We are looking at a 1993 BMW 318 Touring Design Edition 5 speed manual. Now, JP, when I read this, it says Design Edition. I have to scratch my head and wonder is that atrocious neon blue hurricane cloth with neon blue <laughs> piping? The design edition interior is that legit? And of course, it's got this like this uh, what do they call it? Schwartz Mica metallic, this yes. beautiful like midnight blue metallic paint that is just awesome. And it's contrasted by these like little BBS basket weave uh, wheels. Um, this is pure obtainium in the United States, folks. Uh, offered at Lakeland, Florida, with two hundred and sixty-six thousand kilometers, which is one hundred and sixty-five thousand miles. Um, this car was imported from Germany last year. Uh, I, let's just say it, JP. In 1993, the only 3 Series BMW was selling was, in fact, a 325. The 318 wasn't even offered in the U.S. at this time. So the, the wagon and this motor and this year, pure and obtainium. Jason Camissa famously rocks something very similar to this, and he loves it. Um, E30s are just wonderful driving cars and highly desirable in the secondary market. Uh, this car has had some recent service before the consigner purchased it so consider that like a major service system with a uh, time belt water pumps open time belt uh filters and fluids and all that stuff so this car uh, by all accounts is uh serving i believe it is on a u.s title now i can't remember let's see yeah clean car effects and uh, florida title in the seller's name so your opportunity to own something that everybody at cars and coffee will literally spill their coffee running over to come and check out your touring this is a no reserve auction jp what do you think oh man i don't know if there's a car we've seen in a while that i've coveted <laughs> as much as this one i don't know how you don't like that interior that interior is so period correct awesome uh and the the little uh the cargo gate in the back or the doggy gate in the back this thing yep. is the ultimate one car does it all I mean, you can go, you could go hit the track, you could autocross, you could go get groceries, you could go camping, uh, you can look cool at Cars and Cafe. Uh, this car is just oh, so money, and that engine is just smooth. <laughs> the transmission is buttery. I want this E30 so badly. <laughs> this, this, this car does everything but go fast because yeah. if I remember correctly, this 318 motor, it makes 111 horsepower and 119 pound foot of torque. It's got to way over 3,000 pounds being a wagon, but I might be wrong because BMW definitely is an efficient and engineering company. This car might not be a, a, a big as far as the weight is concerned, um, but I mean, you're talking Volkswagen Cabriolet 
uh, levels of performance. JP, I love the interior. I don't like the piping. The, the, the blue cloth seats and the shape of the seats is amazing. The blue piping does it in for me. Uh, and um, as much as I'm a huge fan of E30s, I'd probably rather have that silver sport uh, all-wheel drive wagon with the stick shift. Remember that M Sport wagon we did like a week ago? Yeah, that's uh, that. That's just crazy talk right there. I mean, yes, yep. uh, the performance is probably better on the um, uh, E90, uh, but uh, I mean, this is this is E30, man. This is blue chip. This is where it's I at, know. and it's a Euro spec one, and 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 yep. and and. I mean, and and yep. it's not an all wheel drive. It's a two wheel drive car. Yep. This is the one yep. you want to drive around. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, the only the only problem the only thing I see wrong with this car is that it's from Florida. So to get this car, you either have to ship it. Uh, or have a really long road trip, or maybe you're one of the yeah. people that lives in Florida. Uh, but here's a yeah. little walk around video that uh, the owner kind of did for it, and it really yeah. does show that clean dashboard. This is just a clean dashboard alone makes me want this car. It's it it is for miles. It's in stunning condition. Uh, JP on the Caf Carfax, uh, it says that there was a branded title because the mileage exceeded the mechanical limits. Uh, the seller noted in the uh, comments. That he went back to the DMV in Florida and they issued him a new title and it is clean. So mm. despite the uh, snippet of the bad Carfax, the yeah. the owner of the car is assuring us that it is a clean title and a no reserve auction at Lakeland, Florida. All right, are we ready? Yeah, what's your bid, brother? Um, let's see. Uh, it's at fourteen thousand six hundred dollars, and I think this car is going to bring. A late surge. I, yeah. you know, when I hear how excited you get about it, and I, I, I mean, you know, you can't duplicate this car. They're just not, you never see them ever. Yep. I said on my bid fourteen uh, twenty four thousand dollars, but I might, I might go up. I'm gonna go to twenty five grand, and say okay. that's where, okay. that's where it goes, and that's where it sells. Yeah, I mean, uh, 24 is precisely where I was going to go um, with certainly the potential for Sky above this thing. Does it break yeah. 30? I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm, I am, that's a long way to go from where it's right. at. I mean, that's $10,000 with four hours to go. It's certainly possible. Uh, I'm going to bet the under. I'm going to stick with my 24 and uh, give right. you the over on that. Um, that's funny. We, we came up with the same bid, though. That's pretty Yeah, nice. no, I'm that's gonna uh, over, right huh? where I was going to go. So, uh, so yeah, right. you taking the over already makes that happen. Um, yep. Boy, it would not surprise me if I'm really wrong on this one and it goes 20000 from where it's sitting at right now. I mean, who knows? Me These too. Yeah, crazy. yeah. Yeah. It is. It's, that is a, that car's got a ton of eyeball. Unbelievable. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that we do, you know, we uh, we we say the star car, so it's the first car that we typically talk about. And and it's also you'll notice if you're watching this video after the fact that it was the uh, car in the thumbnail. And the reason why we usually pick whatever car it is is because we do a little research um, ahead of time, knowing which car of the five cars that we choose uh, gets the most like search print, you know, most search numbers. Yeah, and that okay. was, that is For a sure. highly searched car. Uh, so yeah. I imagine there's a lot of traffic looking at this thing anyways. All right, awesome. well, let's move awesome. on uh, a lot said about that. That's yeah. very cool. We, uh, got to move it along. What's the next car here, buddy. All right. So JP, we actually have two cars today from Martinez, California. The first one mm -hmm. is on cars and bids. This is a 2003 Volkswagen Passat. This mm -hmm. is a GLS with the 1.8 T sedan. Uh, this car famously used the same platform as the Audi A4 uh, and had a five-speed manual and even shared the motor, the 1.8 turbocharged inline four uh, that proved to be a really tremendous uh, motor for both Audi and Volkswagen. These uh, two car companies did really well in the United States, and this basic platform uh, was the reason why the B5.5 um, uh, just tons of money volkswagen was killing it in these days and audi uh enjoy a renaissance uh, just a little bit earlier with the uh, first edition of the b5 platform so here's a car out of the bay area out of martinez california with just seventy-seven thousand original miles this is a no reserve auction all that being said this car has almost no value <laughs> um you, yeah. you're looking at a car that's sitting at thirty two hundred dollars on 20 bids i mean i don't think this car is even going to break 
uh, 5,000 bucks, JP, and these are really good, reliable commuter cars. I mean, you know, it, it's not an exciting drive, but it's not boring either. Uh, what do you think? You ever driven up a Passat with the stick and the yeah. 1.8 T? Yeah, some, in this era, there, right? yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a Volkswagen, like, and I mean, it's it's a front wheel drive Volkswagen, like, I mean, it's it's hard, if you, if you had to drive blindfolded uh, and had a Mark IV Jetta or a Mark IV Golf or anything <laughs> from that era, you would think it's it's going to be really hard to tell the difference. You know, the all wheel drive version with the with the automatic, you could really tell the difference between some of the other Volkswagens, um, and uh-huh. the automatic is an absolute horrible. Uh, piece of junk and you know yeah so this is definitely the configuration that you want i'm surprised when you say reliable because that's the last thing i would think on this car this is i mean this era of volkswagen was anything but um all kinds of weird stuff and that 1.8 t is a great motor um but uh you know it's that it's they're just prone for all kinds of little stuff to go wrong with them so so here's my take on the reliability mm. uh volkswagen produces cars all over the world and the mm. cars come out of german that if you wind up buying a, a german built example they tend to be pretty good cars uh but some of these cars are manufactured in brazil and mexico i i can't remember off the top of my head which ones come from where but yeah. if you wind up getting a car that comes out of central or south america it's not the same and, and you know, so, uh, so, you, people, you know, so know, I, I beg to differ on that. And it, there's really? now I, yeah, I think, I think that is a perception thing because look, if you want a Volkswagen, that's reliable. The only from this era, you get uh-huh. a, you find yourself a golf, uh, was it the two liter, the two liter non-turbo base uh-huh. golf, um, that's yeah. made in Mexico. I mean, that is the, the cheapest one they made and that's the only one that's going to get 200,000 miles and it will, it might get 300,000 or the TDI, yeah. but that's a different, different animal. The one eight T was a piece of junk motor. That's really good when it works, but those turbos are putting a lot of extra compression in an engine that really wasn't designed to handle that. And you're going to blow head gaskets. The, the turbos go all the time. Um, the, uh-huh. not to mention, EGR valves and, you know, vacuum leaks and, and, and check engine lights for days. I mean, Volkswagen's of this era is all about the CEL. Um, if I had a kid and I was looking for a car for them, uh, that's cheap and, <laughs> and kind of cool and Euro yeah. and stuff like that, this is not the car I'd say. There's no way in hell. Non-turbo Volkswagens are the only way to go from this era. If you want reliability, <laughs> uh, fun car. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it really is a fun yeah. car, um, for yeah. the money. Money, but you, yeah i don't know this design this go ahead no no i was just shrugging there yeah 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 i you know again i was working at volkswagen audi literally at this time frame and you know we, we seem to have more like failure problems with audi 2.6 uh 2.7 twin turbo motor that was yeah. in the a6 the all road and the s4 those were way more problematic than these cars um, you know, the, the things that we saw, at least when these cars were young, had less to do with the motor and to do with like, you know, faulty window regulators and all the other yeah. stuff. Um, so uh, it's interesting to see how the long run and your experience with the cars is, is different than what I saw when these cars were, you know, still like I said, young and new sort of in period. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean the contem- especially <laughs> it's funny because it's like you, you, you talk about it and it's not that you're, it's that it's like where the bar is set, right? I mean, it's really right, interesting that right. you bring up, you know, the, the VR, the, those six cylinder <laughs> Audis didn't just yeah. fail. They failed on a colossal level when those oh, cars were contemporary. Were. It was so expensive to repair that because it was just a destruction of the engine where you say with this, Oh, the, the 1.8 T all it did was blow a turbo. Well, okay, that, that would be a big deal if it was any other manufacturer, but Audi goes big on such a big level that it's like, whatever. Uh, so it's pretty funny to, yeah. to juxtapose those two things, but it's, yeah. It's brutal. I mean, it's brutal. When people were buying any of those, those cars, those Audi cars, you were like, mm. it's just a matter of time before they come back in here. And they're like, you know, they get news from their service advisor. It's like, you know, it's like catastrophic. Yeah. Anyways, and I think uh, the thing there too, is that they were all dying before the warranties were up. Whereas the one eight T's make it to warranty <laughs> and then they right. blow up. <laughs> so right. it's the second or third right. owner that has to deal with it. Oh man. Okay. So yeah. No reserve auction out of, uh, Martinez, California, um, 20 bids. So this is getting some action. It's at 32 50. 
Uh, I think this car is going to hit five thousand dollars. That's that's kind of where I put my bid, and I, mm. I could be wrong. It might not. It might just peter out here. In another I don't think it breaks Who four, knows? but I'll go forty-one just to you know just to give you a, so, to not yeah. spread it out too much. But uh, yeah, hour and a half to go, so forty-one not a bad bid at all. I don't think it breaks forty, go. but I'm gonna I'm gonna go forty-one just to narrow the spread all a little right. bit, but not go right under you. Okay. All right. All right. Here's another car that is really tough to uh, uh, gauge. This is another no reserve auction, but we're going to jump over to bring a trailer and look at this 1989 Isuzu Trooper 2. <laughs> uh, this car is offered to us out of, uh, it's up in the mountain, Grass Valley, California. That's in the foothills on the way up to the Sierras, like if you were going up towards Tahoe, JP. So I guess somebody, some resident up there had to have a year round vehicle that can. Uh, get to the kids to school before they plow the roads because this uh this is a true all-wheel drive all-terrain vehicle powered by a huge 2.6 liter inline four uh these are just torque monsters and um this car is an automatic though paired with an automatic transmission uh two-speed transfer case um these are all the rage i remember when these cars were super popular back in the 80s because they were inexpensive and they were all wheel drive. And, and that was just like, you know, for all the people in the Bay area that wanted to go to Tahoe for the winter because they were skiing or snowboarding or whatever. Um, and you saw a lot of these on the road back in the day and you never see them anymore. Uh, this one looks to be in pretty nice condition with just 89,000 original miles, uh, clean Carfax. And again, a no reserve auctions. This car will sell. It's sitting at $12,000 with four and a half hours to go. JP, what you take? I want to love this thing so badly. Uh, it is one of the nicest ones I've seen since the 90s. Um, yeah. And you're right. They were very popular at the time. They were a poor man's basically Range Rover. And, you know, so, they, they have that minimalist boxy design. It's just like everything about the way this thing looks screams, uh, you know, that kind of Euro Defender type of thing <laughs> happening, which makes you go, oh, my gosh, this checks a lot of boxes. The, the most... Right. You know, the highest resale vehicles on the market uh, have been and continue to be Land Rover Defenders, original ones, right. Wrangler yep. four doors, and G Wagons. Well, I right. mean, this has all of that in a Japanese wrapper. Which would make right. you think this should be just these should be worth all the money. Everyone should want one of these, and it should be all those things that the Mercedes and the Jeep and the um, you know Defender aren't, which would be reliable. Uh, unfortunately, because of the close relationship that this vehicle had with uh, Chrysler, uh, they had the Raider version of this thing in the two door. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm, I'm that's not that's correct, Mits but that's Mitsubishi. Yeah, that's that's Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm brain farting there. I knew that, that that wasn't the case, but still you would think that these would be Isuzu not being connected with Chrysler, <laughs> uh, that it was a pure Japanese rig that this thing would be awesome, but they're just not, they just break all the time. The powertrain in this thing was junk. Um, things just the reason you said you haven't seen one in a while. It's because they just didn't make mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, and a lot of them were abused because they were cheap. I know so many kids in the nineties that had these as their high school cars and they just got uh, destroyed. Yeah. They're just unrebuildable. Destroyed. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, whew, I, I want to love, and boy, this one is clean. The, the more I look at all these pictures, it's, it's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how preserved it is, but so, it's only on, only on 10 bids. JP, this car is at $12,000 on just 10 bids. There's no action. It's crazy. Yeah, but $12,000 for an Isuzu Trooper. I mean, this is, yeah. these are, you can go on Craigslist anywhere in the country and dig around and probably find one for 1500 bucks. I mean, it's not going to be in this kind of condition, but that's the kind of numbers that you're dealing with when you're looking for one of these. It's like literally a $400 parts car. Um, seeing one that actually runs, yeah, okay, it might get $1,500, maybe $2,000 for the nicest one I've seen in a long time. But this one is beyond nice. Uh, and how many miles yeah. did you say it has on it? 89,000. 89,000 miles. So that's really low miles, which is right about the time the engine's going to explode. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, yep. but how much could an engine be for one of these? I mean, that's the, that's okay. the, 
so so hang on to your hang on to your hat for one second okay you keep saying you think these should be all the money jp these cars were only like thirteen thousand dollars when they were brand new yeah i know but you know the, the wranglers weren't very much when they were brand new but yet wranglers still bring all the money like a like a, right. a 2015 wrangler unlimited or, or hell a 2007 wrangler unlimited yeah. how much was that brand new <laughs> Uh, a, a 2007 Wrangler brand new when they came out were in the t- mid twenties, right? Well, they're going to be yeah, in the yeah. mid to high teens, uh, even if it has 190 thousand miles on it. So really, that's yeah. the thing is that this formula of boxy utilitarian, uh, you know, minimalism it, with kind of a, almost a military look to the vehicle that seems to hold the value above and beyond, you know, what it should have been. Yes, Mercedes G wagons were expensive back in the day in 2000, but even a a, a 2000 thousand G wagon with 200,000 miles on it is worth 30,000 bucks, you know? So what yeah, the hell? I, um, yeah. And the, the only point I was trying to make is I I'm surprised. I thought these cars might've been like 20,000 or more when they were new. Yeah. The fact that it's 13 and it's sitting at 12, I'm surprised that this car is sitting there at close to do and probably going to break MRP, which is shocking yeah. to me yeah. even as low as it is. Yeah. I agree that the formula should dictate that the car should be worth more money by today's standards, but uh, it's still impressive that this car is going to bring MSRP. And the fact that it's at 12,000 with four hours to go, uh, and how many bids yeah. do we have here? 10, just 10. Just 10. Okay, so not a lot of action, but some big ass oh. money for this thing. Uh, I mean, yeah. every dollar above 5,000 is a just absolute you know, breathtaking yeah. shock. Uh, and, 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 and like alphas and like a lot of cars that we talk about, uh, that have brought some kind of ridiculous money. My guess is right. a lot of people are going to see this and go, Oh, I have one of these in the backyard. That's covered with moss. Let's clean it off and see if we could get 4,000 yeah. bucks for it. Cause yesterday it was worth a dollar and a half. This is better than gold or Bitcoin. What are you doing? People <laughs> buy Isuzu troopers. Buy, buy, buy. This is a buy. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Rinse it off and roll it to the oh front Oh my line. God. <laughs> if you can get it, you know, pour some sea foam in it and, uh, you know, get it to oh. run for five minutes for a video. Oh my God. That's hilarious. All right. Yeah. With all that being said, JP, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go. There's three grand more left in this car. I'm going to go 15,000 bucks. We and need some. Uh, it sells because it's a 15 no reserve, grand. Right? Yeah. I think we need yeah. someone to analyze our videos and go, all right, what do we spend the most time on talking about? Do uh, we, do we sit there the and talk about, cars. yeah, it, it's never the, the half million dollar Ferrari or some, yeah. you know, four GT. It's yeah. like, Oh, what's this piece of junk Isuzu yeah. or a uh, yeah. Fox body uh, or a Volkswagen <laughs> Fox from Mexico. Even, yeah, even today we had this incredible 318i, and then we stalled out on the Passat, and we're droning on on the Trooper, and our audience, which are basically our two wives and our four dogs, are yeah. just sleeping. <laughs> anyway, they've what's your they've never heard of an Azuzu Trooper. It's like a Starship That's Trooper. True, yeah. uh, my bit. You said 15. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm going to go under, I don't think it can go much higher than this. There's no way there's not enough people looking at it. Uh, I'm going to go the <laughs> under and go 14, say it finds another couple grand if they're lucky. All I mean, right. the fact that it's at 12 is just shocking. Uh, it sure will be interesting if it goes above yours. Uh, if it goes higher oh, than 15, God. I mean, it is like, it is a mad search for, for Zuzu troopers. It's on. Yeah. 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 All right. All right what do we got? Let's let's see now. Uh, we are gonna go. We're gonna stay on break trailer, uh, but let's get to Stuttgart and talk about stuff that makes us comfortable. Mm-hmm. A 1984 Porsche 911 Carrera Targa mm-hmm. offered to us out of Auburndale, Massachusetts. This car is showing 154,000 miles, but it's true mileage unknown at this point. Um, Four was the first year 3.2 liter. These have a 915 gearbox. And targs are on the rise. That being said, this car has a unusual Momo steering wheel. It's not a prototype. Looks more like a Monte Carlo or something. Um, and the, these wheels, uh, JP, if I'm not correct, these are like knockoffs of the 993 RS wheels. Um, probably yeah, they're knockoff speed lines. Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so um, uh, basically taking the 16 inch wheel and jumping it up 18 inches. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of these wheels on this platform of porsche uh otherwise this car looks pretty clean somebody yanked the ac out of it but the, the dash is in good repair the seats are in good repair um there's a strut tower base but it doesn't mention much else the original wheels are off with the sale 
here's your opportunity to get into sort of a no nonsense Carrera with a few miles on it and it might have a great triple black manual transmission or cooled value buy. This car is, when I look at it, the moment I see the thumbnail, it is a JP special. <laughs> and I mean that with all sincerity. Yeah. JP, you have a way of doing one or two little modifications that when you glance at one of your cars, just for a second, your brain has to recalculate. Is that a 993? Is that a 993 cab? <laughs> like, can, like what, is yeah. it, what is it about that car that I'm not sure that's a 993? I'm not sure if I'm getting a compliment or not there. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. No, 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 it is. No, it's... And this it, car, with these wheels, I had to look to see if these were accordion bumpers. I'm like, is that a Jeep, buddy? With 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 like those RS wheels, it was really funny. So anyway, there you yeah, go, John. That is Holman funny. Special. Yeah, I mean those wheels are not period correct. I am a huge fan of three piece wheels. Everybody knows, uh, and you know, but the the wheels, the Fuchs that come with it, and you know, and there's here's a picture of the Fuchs, the yep. the original ones. I mean, I did you happen to catch what size they are? Are they um, uh, no, eights and nines or sevens and eights or sixes oh, and no, sevens, sh- probably seven and sure eights, right? Hip. Yeah. They're, I mean, and I, I love the, s- what do they call this? The T pedal. Yeah. It might be six. You know, the T pedal design on the Fuchs where you have, uh, the actual pedals exposed and the black on the inside, yeah. I think is perfect on a black car. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, the three piece wheels just not period correct. Sorry. Um, I, those yeah. wheels would look fantastic on a nine, six, four or a nine, nine, three, like you said. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few little tweaks on this. I mean, like the, uh, it's got those stupid little, uh, things on the, uh, the, the foot pedals have those dumb, cheesy little perforated grippy foot pedal thing, you know, that just looks bad. And you know, that needs to be changed. It's got the stupid carbon fiber shift knob and yeah, you're right. The Monte Carlo steering wheel, uh, needs to be replaced. Excuse me. And, uh, just throw on a prototype and you're good to go. Um, yeah, it's weird. There's some pictures here of some, looks like some, uh, like the bot, the, like the front fender has been removed and stuff like that. Did you read about what's going on here? Do we know? I, I think, Portions of the car have been repainted, JP, and I, there must be photos from when that was done. Well, but, I mean, uh, the I'm fenders exactly are removed sure. from it, uh, but uh, yeah, right. I, I'm not entirely sure what's up with this car. That said, it does have some great eyeball. I think it has some great potential, but not for big potential. It also said in the ad that uh, second gear is grinding until it's warmed up. Ooh. So you know, when you hear That's when you good. hear people having a problem <laughs> shifting on on a G15, I'm usually yeah. thinking it's nine times out of ten it's a shift coupler uh because right. the rubber grommets and those just did you know just disintegrate over 30 years <laughs> yeah. and people don't change them they'll change they'll they'll change a clutch before they change that It'll look i've seen i can't tell you how many times i've heard of people going through and replacing synchros uh and it turns yeah. out and then they put it all back together and they're like it still drives horrible what's wrong with it um and it turns out it was just the freaking coupler uh which is a 50 dollar part not i don't even think it's that much so no. Uh, yeah, uh, it does have H4s. It is the 3.2, which is great. Um, yeah, you got a bid for this thing? Yeah, I mean, JP, I just, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I've been so soft on Volkswagens lately, and mm. I, I'm not I'm not feeling this car at like $40,000. I, You know, it's hard to explain. Uh, I, the car was at $14,000 last night. I said twenty grand. Um, I still think this is a lot of car for the money. I, I'm still going to, I'm going to raise my bid, but not a lot. I'm going to go $32,000, but I, I just, I don't know. There's something weird. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely going to break 30. I mean, if it doesn't, it won't sell. Or is this a no reserve or is this a reserve? Oh, it's a reserve. It's got a reserve. It does have, yeah. So it's going to be over yeah. 30. I mean, it, even with the second gear sync ratio, you're looking at a three or $4,000 repair, um, yeah. which sucks. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's a 3.2 target, man. I mean, there's n- just yeah. throw the original wheels. I don't know why the hell this guy took pictures of the yeah. car with those speed lines. This, just sell the speed line separately. You'll get a couple grand for them, even if they're knockoffs. Right. Uh, put the yep. original wheels on it. And now all of a sudden you have a completely transformed car that has a much wider audience. Um, yep. He just He'd get com- more money for the car, and the the wheels are worth twenty five hundred bucks in the secondary market, even the yeah. knockoff. I mean, yeah, that's that's crazy. You're absolutely right on that. 
Um, so it's it's still sitting at seventeen thousand dollars with four and a half hours to go. So uh, I'm the other go. the other thing I'm really concerned the thing I'd, I'd like to know about and I didn't read any of the comments. Maybe it says in there has the engine been rebuilt? Has the top end been redone? When was the last time a compression check has been done? Valves that kind of stuff. I mean, a top end is you know ten thousand dollars or a refresh is you know it's that that's a that could make a big difference. If they said in the comment somewhere, if the seller says, yeah, the top end's been redone in the last twenty thousand miles. Okay, this is a much different scenario if it has been now you're looking at nearly a forty thousand dollar car um but right, right now tmu he, true mileage unknown who knows yeah and he doesn't mention that he talks about you know wheels and bearings and things like that but nothing yeah. about the motor um the oil transmission rebuilding a distributor uh power sent the wheels to five speed and that's it yeah, yeah. No, so you said no so you said 32 of, yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna leave it there Okay. Yeah. I mean, nine elevens on BAT have a way of like climbing at the, you know, that they have those long winded kind of, uh, ends of the auctions that go for another half hour. Uh, so you know, 17, five, uh, there's no way this car is selling anywhere near that. Um, it's definitely going to get out of the twenties. It's going to get into the thirties. The question is how high, if it doesn't get into the thirties, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to say 31, uh, bet the under, and I'm probably wrong. I think uh, I think a lot of people will see it like we do. The fact that it comes with the original yeah. wheels, they're going to see through the, the, the stupidity of this ad. Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah. All right. All and right. we got one last it- car, right? Well, that's got yeah. Now, JP, uh, tell our audience who uh, sent this over to us. Yeah, Matt Drobny, our good friend, uh, the LeBron buyer uh, out of California, uh, pinged me this morning and who wanted us to talk about this really, really pretty car. Let's get there's right. a picture of it. Look at that! Holy cow! Yes, that's, these are good photos too. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's not bad, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we are looking at JP. Our audience is looking at a 1964 Porsche 350 C 356. C coupe. Uh, these cars are powered by a 1600 cc flat four air cooled. Um, by 1964, these cars all came with disc brakes. This one is even on a California black plate. This is the epitome of California cool, in my opinion. Um, when I was a young child, my uncle had almost this exact same car. I think his might have been. Uh, a B might have been a little bit older than this, but it could have been a C. I don't remember. I'll have to find this old photograph I have standing in front of the car, but it was a, a red 356 coupe, and I just adored it. I always thought I'd be big into Porsches because my uncle owned basically this car uh, when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s. Um, this paint was redone many years ago. It looks like it held up pretty well. Uh, the interior seems to have been done uh, more recently. Um, these motors are easily easy to uh, rebuild. Um, so I would say over the years, everything has been redone on this car, and it looks to be just a very good, very honest driver. Um, this is a reserve auction. It is offered, again, out of Martinez, California. It's sitting at 68 thousand dollars sixty eight thousand five hundred on 15 bids it's definitely getting some action it's likely going to reach its reserve and sell what's your take jp do you do you do you get it up for 356s or do they just putt putt too much for your sensibilities as somebody who really likes to drive his cars i you know i used to not understand the appeal at all i remember uh-huh. people in the 90s driving them you know like yeah i got this car for like six thousand bucks i'm just like wow why would you even spend that on this stupid <laughs> Volk- it's just a volkswagen beetle uh this right. says porsche on it whatever you know i would rather get a 914 or even a you know a target 911 or something like that because at least he had the open motoring motoring experience this i just didn't get it but but now i just absolutely love him i guess it's an old guy thing um you know having you know but the thing is too i never drove them back then but i have driven them and they're just so much fun um this one you know yeah i I love the idea this one is not an emery special uh but you could drive the heck out of it um yeah dig it not quite sure what this one's Uh worth given its kind of odd condition what do you think I don't know. I mean, GP, listen, these cars, these cars are older than us. I mean, like, yeah. you know, they've been around for a That's while. Old. So I, I mean, you know, the idea that these cars are still going to have every original OEM part that, that they came with is absurd. You know, they, mm-hmm. they've been, mm-hmm. you know, patched and bandaged together. The values on these have, uh, uh, have certainly increased, which, which has made it 
a mixed bag because there's guys who can't afford their values that still own them in the garage. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people that have, uh, you know, sold the car. And then somebody who can afford to like, redo them has has put some money into them, invest them to keep them on the road. Um, it's amazing to me how people, how many people go out and enjoy driving them uh, because they're modest in performance. You know, the, the fastest ones uh, make like 95 horsepower. I mean, they're not really that that quick, um, but they get a ton yeah. But of it's it, but but it's that whole thing that we talk about all the time. Yeah. It's like yeah, by the yeah. numbers they're not very fast. But when you're behind yeah. the when you go seventy miles an hour in something like this, you feel like yeah. you're going a million. You may as well be oh, warp yeah. freaking speed because it's just right. and that's what I I think that's just it's like any it's any of the old air cold Porsches. Your car Ruby, you know, is not a yeah. fast car by any no. means, but you drive it nope. fast, and oh, it's yeah. just fun to be in. And and you know, this car is even more distilled than an 80s or even a 70s car it's because every this is as mechanical as you get your butt touching the seat touching the the, you know your elbow on the steer on the on the door sill everything about this car is giving you information that's making the experience more fun you got to think about everything that you're doing if you do it wrong it penalizes you (laughs) and when you do it right it rewards you right i mean look at this driving video don't you want to be there right now isn't is there any place (laughs) in the world you'd rather be than where this guy is i mean he found a great road this is what a great ad too really nice photography and a uh, a nice clean driving video on a twisty road wow he's not driving by a dunkin donuts and an in and out (laughs) you know (laughs) for once Uh, his wife's not staying in the driveway of his house while he does drive bys on his street. In yeah. Yeah. Just, just anybody give shit about those videos. Like, come on. But yeah. you're right. JP at 70 miles an hour in this car, your elbows come up. I mean, you're all of a sudden this car's got your undivided attention yeah. and it doesn't take a lot. The other thing too, JP, the amount of attention you get, if you're cruising down the road or show up to a, a rally or cars and coffee in one of these, People lose their mind. Everybody yeah. wants to come over and talk to you about the car. Uh, and all these cars, the, the great, the best versions of these, JP, are the ones where you know the history because every one of these cars has an incredible story. Um, so anyways, here we go. This car is at $68,500. Uh, without further ado, I I think this car is going to make it to 90000 or maybe just under, but but it wouldn't yeah. surprise me in the lead. If this car is bought for eighty five, it's well sold and it's well purchased. Um, but this one and the, the ads look right. It's on break trailer. I'm not going to be shocked if it does 90 or more. I'm going to say 90000 my bid. All right, you uh, you stole my bid when you said eighty five. That was the number oh, that was in my yeah. head the second I saw it, and uh, that's where I'm going to stay. Uh, but like Good. you, I agree that it could potentially go much higher. I think that the quality of this ad should be rewarded, and someone should spend more money for this car. Um, and I think if it does, that will be why. That will be the deciding factor. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. If it's if it's in the high, if it winds up in the high. 90s it's all about the photography and the fact that there's that driving video i'm just looking at that driving video going man i, I need to go find yeah. a 356 J- again i mean i miss mine jay J- J- correct me if i'm wrong right so you, mm-hmm. you you're a seller and you go to bring a trailer you first them the information and then they write the copy so yeah. your only way to directly communicate with your potential buying audience is through the images and videography if you're smart enough to do that and you shouldn't skip on that i mean you don't i mean it's like you can't say enough you harp on it all the time and yeah. every once in a while you see a, a car and you look at it and you and i neither one of us really wants to own a 356 but you watch that guy driving on the video and and you're like oh, i wish i was on that road with him right now it'd be so right much now. fun yeah, I don't think there's Stand any place up. I'd rather be. Yep. Yep. There you go. All right. All right. There you go, guys. We had a little bonus car. Thanks, Matt Drabney from uh, from the, our, our, the LeBron uh, specialist. Um, he's just an awesome friend of the uh, show. He's been on the show. Look for his episode about uh, the ethics of purchasing a car on uh, cars and bids and bring a trailer. He had a little bit of an issue when someone kind of tried to flake on him. Uh, that's a previous oh episode of bid nerds. You can look that up on our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you watch that and follow Matt Drabney. I'm not sure what his, uh, we need to figure out what his, uh, 
Yeah. I can't remember what his tag is on the handle. Insta yeah. Ha- what is handle? Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Old guy here. Been up since four in the morning, guys. <laughs> We're out shooting a, uh, a Porsche Turbo S uh, from the Porsche exclusive project. Uh, was it manufacturer? Manufacturer. Manufacturer this morning. Uh, we were filming that on the fabulous Las Vegas strip. Had an awesome shoot this morning. It was a good time. Thanks, Paul. And I the saw folks you. over at God and Porsche for yep. uh, the opportunity. I saw, you, Lee. I saw you, Lee, uh, early in the morning out there working your butt off. Yeah, we flew yep. Lee in from Heathrow. Yeah, exactly to, uh, <laughs> to help it, yeah. us out. Uh, yeah. f- six years ago when we flew him in, but anyways, uh, yeah, there it yeah. is. <laughs> Another episode of the Bid Nerds. This is your daily nerd on the most interesting cars and cars and bids, and bring a trailer and sometimes other auction sites as well. My name is John Polnick, along with my host Michael D. We thank you very much for joining us, and make sure you subscribe and like, share this video, share our channel, let other people know about it. Let, let let's nerd unite, man. Let's get together. <laughs> Hit that notification button so you know when a new video comes out. And but it's not like you need a notification. We're on every morning during the nine o'clock hour on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, thanks for hanging out guys. We will see you tomorrow for another batch of cars on bid nerds. Thanks guys. Thanks.